thousands of students are returning to university this week. So in an exclusive program, UK Today will be reporting to you from campuses around England to examine the key issues. Join us for the definitive lowdown on what it's like to be a student in a time of dramatic change. Last year, the country has seen protests and anger in the face of rising tuition fees. So how are universities and the new students coping with these new changes? Well, we can go to London Metropolitan University to see how the capital has been affected. Hi there, Curry. Yes, I'm here standing in the courtyard at London Metropolitan University. And anyone who's been reading the higher education supplements of the past six months or so will undoubtedly have heard that London Metropolitan has been going through an awful lot of change. A whole raft of humanities courses have been cut. There's been a lot of change to the infrastructure here at the university. And all of this brings a whole load of questions about the upcoming academic year. I've never known a summer quite like this. The volume of demand on undergraduate degrees has been quite extraordinary. This is, of course, due to the fact that big fees, the doubling, or in some cases the trebling of fees, is coming in next year, and students are applying in their thousands. A number of courses were pulled back. It was the view um, of the vice chancellors and others that we needed to streamline uh, our portfolio of courses, and uh, uh, it looks like we have managed to hit the target, even with a reduced number of courses, which is great. So the university is on a par with the rest of the country when it comes to enrolment targets, and there's an air of cautious optimism around campus. The senior staff remain realistic about the future. All the sorts of um, services that um, support our most vulnerable students has just taken a 30% um, cut, around a 30% cut, so that's going to have the knock-on effects um, to our students. And of course the staff members are um, going to be greatly affected by this as well because they're going to be working under increasing workload. We have to make sure that our staff salaries at all levels are commensurate with that. So we've moved to be paying the London living wage for our um, most poorly paid uh, staff and we're also looking at the way that we reduce the salaries of our senior staff. We've frozen those salaries, they continue to be frozen, but we're looking at other initiatives as well. We do have a penalty to pay back to the funding council, which is difficult for us at this time, but we have ways through that. And we're not going to forsake our affordable access mission in any of that. We can do it all, provided we get the message out that this is good value for any student who wants to get a proper British education at undergraduate, postgraduate, or all sorts of professional levels. Yeah, London Met's here to stay. This has been Ollie Hunter reporting from London Metropolitan University for UK Today. Well, good news there from London Metropolitan. Winchester student Colin Bogue went down earlier to speak to Tommy Geddes, Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Winchester University, to see how enrolment and tuition fees are going to affect us here. Um, it's, it's asking you to look into your crystal ball a little bit. Do you think, um, in terms of the number of applications you'll get next year, um, the increase in fees, Would you, are you expecting fewer applications? We don't know yet is the answer, no, neither does anybody, including the government. If we introduce the, this change at a, at a dramatic pace without having the foggiest idea what's going to happen, that's the honest the aspect of it. And there's two issues about demand, what will happen to demand for places. One is, will the total number of students in the country, will, will they, who want to be students, will they grow or stay the same or decrease? In other words, will the fee put enough people off going to university so the total number of students decrease. The cake, the size of the cake, how big will that cake be? Now, how big our slice of the cake is will depend on how good we are yeah. and how good our competitors are yeah. and might depend, for example, on price, although I think n not much. So we worry about the size of the cake and all the evidence from across the world is that it's pretty inelastic. You could put fees up by a large amount as they're doing now and it'll have very little effect on demand. That was certainly the case, say, five, six years ago now, when fees trebled from 1,000 to 3,000. Demand just kept on going up like that. We don't know whether that will continue with fees at eight, 9,000, but it looks likely. So what students at Winters University think about the issue? So do you think the money you pay for a degree is, is worth it? Um, I think it's definitely worth it because at the end of your degree you get a career out of it. I'm doing primary teaching so that'll lead me straight into a career path. So it's definitely worth taking it. If I didn't get in this year I wasn't going to uni next year. I'm not paying nine grand a year to be a teacher. You just don't get that much back from it. Um, I kind of feel lucky I guess because 
where we got in, but then I feel bad that the people next year, just because they were born the year after, that they're, they're gonna have to pay so much. So I'm guessing a lot of people are just gonna be forced into work rather than be able to hone their crafts through higher education and everything. But I feel good right now, but I feel bad for later students. So by the sound of it, the new students at Winchester University don't really see the rise of tuition fees as such an issue. However, this might change next year when the tuition fees go up to £8,500 a year. This was Justin Schlatt at Winchester University for UK Today. Well, another issue facing students this year is overpopulation, which in university cities can be a problem. But Brian McMurtry from Leeds knows far more about that than I do. The city of Leeds is one of the most popular student destinations in the UK, hosting over a quarter of a million students. The Headingley area of the city has become overly populated with students, increasing by 60% over 10 years. This has led to tension between the local community and the growing student body. The residents have become concerned with noise, pollution and traffic which has become part and parcel with their new members. At the end of their tavern, locals have felt it necessary to take action. Since 2000, they've been campaigning for stronger controls on houses of multiple occupancy, which is the general price range of a student. Dr Richard Tyler is the coordinator of the Leeds HMO lobby, and he spoke to us about his concerns in the local community. We sort of grown about this through the 1990s, and so that was why in 2000 we set up the organisation, and we've been campaigning ever since for measures to address uh, this issue. Uh, you know, one thing I want to say is that it's, we're not an anti-student organisation at all. Uh, if you like, we're not anti-student. What we are is pro-community, uh, and our concern really is to maintain the, uh, as far as we can, the community that we have, or at least we had, uh, in and around Headingley. Students themselves have developed a strong sense of attachment to the area, and even their own feeling of a community. I think there's a very good uh, student community atmosphere in Headingley. Um, everybody's sort of there for the same purpose and um, we seem to happily coincide with it. There are quite a lot of our own families that live there, there's the elderly and everybody seems to get on okay. But in recent years, the issues in the area have overflowed. In 2010 alone, over 600 tonnes of rubbish had to be removed from the area. In response to this, Leeds Metropolitan and Leeds University have launched a combined programme in order to get rid of the rubbish and improve relations. This is the most beautiful ever. It's impossible to tell which way this complex situation will develop. But with new legislation and increased interest from both sides of the fence, there is certainly hope for everyone in this diverse and charming area. Brian McMurtry, Leeds Metropolitan. Now over to Salford, where some new changes have brought about some new developments for the university's enviable media department. I'm here at the heart of Media City, where next month the University of Salford opens its brand new campus for journalism and media students. Media City will soon become home to five major BBC departments, including sports and children's. Also, ITV Granada and Coronation Street will be based at the site from next year. It is now also home to Salford University Media Campus, which has been designed to emulate a real-life media organisation. Right at the moment, the facilities that will open here this week are state-of-the-art. They simply match uh, the BBC's and the IT, ITV's facilities. So in our teaching studios here are the same um, as the studios just across the, uh, the, the, the lane here. And the, the, the studios down here at Media City are in fact um, the largest complex of digital studios in Europe and one of the largest in the world. Here at Media City, over 1,500 students will be starting at this brand new campus, which is designed to provide them with a better working environment, an opportunity students are very excited about. Brilliant. I mean, it's not like totally done yet, but I reckon when it's done, it'll be fantastic. I mean, it'll be a great place to learn, and can't wait for it, really. I fully expect that the talent that we create and who work with us here will find opportunities in the North West. This is a huge opportunity for the students of Salford University, but now the hard work really begins. Sarah Chambers, UK Today, Media City. don't get that much back from it. Um, I kind of feel lucky I guess because 
where we got in. And the fees trebled from 1,000 to 3,000. Demand just kept on going up like that. It's just taken a 30% um, cut, around 30% cut. So that's going to have an economic effect um, to our students. <laughs> now go to Buckingham where a rise in population is also having its effect on students trying to find houses in the new year. Welcome to the University of Buckingham. So what's the story? In the space of a year it has gone from the strange private institution that offers two-year degrees to something of a model for the future of tertiary education in Britain. However, expansion spots own problems. Tala Alania reports. Students at Buckingham have always been able to stay in university halls of residence, such as the ones behind me, for the entire two-year duration of their courses. With the campus population rising by 200% this month, students in their second year now have to fend for themselves, no mean feat in a small town of 11,000, which already has a severe lack of rented accommodation. With the university snapping up property, we asked the accommodation office how they were tackling the problem. Our current plans, we've created um, a new scheme. Students were always guaranteed accommodation for a single year on campus. Um, this is the first year that we've had to enforce that policy, so we now have a scheme to move those students off campus into rented accommodation, um, meaning that we have more space on campus for our brand new students. The students have been a little bit unnerved by it initially, but we have created a scheme where they do come in and speak to us. Um, we try and match their preferences as best as we can, um, and we look at things like their budget, the type of people that they get along with that we'd like to share with, and the properties and location. Um, so we try and ease their, any stresses that they have, and we do organise transportation for their belongings to into their new properties as well. But not all students in Hall are convinced. I think it's unfair for us because it's not my fault but then I have to move out so um, I think this policy should change. What's clear is that as university we have to work hard to make sure that success doesn't spoil the very things that have made Buckingham what it is today. Well unfortunately that's it from us here at UK Today but we sincerely hope this program has been beneficial. As parting words for all of you guys starting your new year, good luck but from us here it's goodbye.